Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white enchantment deck featuring a ton of cards from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, an archetype I haven't really covered on the channel before, and one of the key cards is Weaver of Harmony, 2 mana 2-2, two, two, giving other enchantment creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, and for single green we can tap it to copy target activated or triggered ability we control from an enchantment source and choose new targets for the copy. So a bit of a weird line of text here, but what it means is we can double our triggers from Spirited Companion to draw an extra card, we can double the triggers from our various enchantment removal spells like Circle of Confinement and Touch the Spirit Realm to exile multiple creatures from the opponent, can also double our Reign of Truth to pump multiple creatures, and even Wedding Announcement can make extra tokens or draw extra cards. Then we also have the full set of Jukai Naturalist, a 2-2 lifelink enchantment creature giving all our enchantments a 1 mana discount, so very useful in helping us double spell and triple spell in the late game. Then looking at our 1-drops we've got Generous Visitor, which will put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature whenever we cast an enchantment spell, and then Commune with Spirits lets us play a lower land count, only have 22 at the moment, as it can find lands and in the late game we can find more enchantments with it. And then we already mentioned our Circle of Confinement as removal, as well as Touch the Spirit Realm, and that's the main thing that separates the green-white enchantment deck from some of the Naya versions, is that we do get access to more removal, so we can keep up against opposing creature decks, and then of course our Reign of Truth, a great finisher, pumping our creatures equal to the number of artifacts and enchantments we control, eventually turning into Portrait of Michiko, and then Companion is awesome alongside Weaver, and Kami of Transients, similar to Generous Visitor, also rewards us for playing enchantments once it's in play, a 2-2 Trampler picking up a plus one counter whenever we cast an enchantment spell, and then we can also get it back from our graveyard if an enchantment was put into our graveyard from the battlefield this turn, so great in combination with all the enchantment creatures in the case of various sweeper effects. And then at 3 mana we're also playing the full set of Wedding Announcement as an extra card draw engine, which we kind of need in this green-white version, compared to some of the Naya versions, which get to play with Showdown of the Skulls as a great way to refuel. Of course we could also splash red to add Showdown, but the strength of the green-white version is kind of a more consistent mana base, a lower curve, and then getting to play with a Wedding Announcement as an extra threat, making a bunch of 1-1 tokens, eventually pumping the team, and potentially drawing some cards in the process as as well. Could play some more finishers like the Hallowed Haunting as another way of making spirit tokens and kind of go over the top, but for the most part we're trying to keep the curve low as we have multiple cards that draw between Companion and Announcement, and we can also use our Weaver as an extra mana sink, and then we also have two copies of Cave of the Frost Dragon as an extra creature land that can maybe help us close out the game, especially nice in combination with the Wedding Festivity pumping our creatures can make our cave into a real threat. And then we also have some channel lands with Aiganjo and Buseju, then four planes, six forests, and four of the dual lands. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. We'll need a third land at some point. Put some nice two drops, and then multiple removal spells. Announcement for card draw, hopefully. So turn two, go for Kami of Transients, and then we might just drop a Wedding Announcement before playing Weaver. Opponent on an Angel Tribal deck with Jada, that might have to get exiled here by Touch the Spirit Realm. Now it's unlikely for them to benefit too much from Jada in the early turns, maybe if they have a Legion Angel they could ramp it out, but uh, it's a card we'll eventually have to deal with, so might as well do it now. Valkyrie also a scary one, although can maybe wait one turn to answer it, and it's not going to be a huge disaster, so I can maybe get a wedding announcement down, pump or Kami to attack pasts, Valkyrie, and develop our card draw engine. And then next turn we can get an extra blocker out of the way perhaps. Attack with our token to draw with Announcement. Ideally we can double spell. Second Valkyrie is scary. 
and our opponent stays back. Okay, in that case, probably go for a naturalist into Touch the Spirit Realm. And then I could essentially trade my 1-1 one, one token for an extra card. If we attack with both, or I can just send Kami and make an extra token end of turn. I think I'm okay just sitting for 6, because with another announcement coming up, we can actually make use of all these 1-1 one, one tokens once we get Wedding Festivity down. So going wide might not be a bad plan. Because I do expect Kami to be answered at some point, opponents playing black-white with access to Vanishing Verse, which can easily exile it. Okay, Jada into Overseer. And yeah, we're out of removal here. So this Righteous Valkyrie might take over. So we can Announcement again. Play Weaver. At least our Kami's beating down nicely. And now it's probably worth it to attack with at least two creatures, and Naturalist either gets blocked by Valkyrie or Trades, so that's acceptable. And that way we get to draw two end of turn. Okay. Circle of Confinement is excellent, times two. So that can clear Valkyrie and Jada. It's gonna be a Sanctuary Warden with two shield counters that we cannot exile with Circle. So not a bad card. Now we can also use Weaver to exile an extra creature with Circle of Confinement. Or we can maybe use it to draw an extra card with Wedding Announcements, which I also like. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be tough. Another circle to draw, so we have options. I think using Weaver for extra removal is probably acceptable. Although we have to be careful about our opponents getting rid of our circle. So target Valkyrie. Copy the ability. And we'll get rid of Jada as well. And then, do I want to circle the Overseer? Right now, I could attack with pretty much the entire team, and then they would eat my Naturalist, and then maybe trade and still take, like, 12. They could also double block 3-2 and 1-1 one, one on Naturalist, that seems less likely. Yeah, I think we smash with the team. Opponents absorbing damage instead. And it's gonna trade for Kami. That works. And end of turn we draw. Cleric of Life Spawned, so also a bit of a cleric theme here. And another Overseer. Spirited Companions, nice, can also be doubled by Weaver. So we'll start there. Another Naturalists. Okay. Let's circle the Cleric of Life's Bonds. And then what happens if I attack with a team? It's probably okay. And with a naturalist dying, we can get back our Kami. But I think I still play naturalist for now. So our team now getting plus two, plus two, enchantment creatures getting an extra plus one, plus one, and yeah, third overseer. Card's pretty good in these kind of grindy matchups. And another cleric. 
gains us a bit of life thanks to the circle. I'm still terrified of our opponents finding an answer to this other circle of confinement and getting their creatures back, especially at instant speed. Can commune. Finding Poseju doesn't do much. So I guess we'll grab a cave. Play Kami. Weaver triggers Kami. And then probably want to double the circle triggers with Weaver of Harmony. And then we can exile probably Cleric plus Overseer. And then do we smash with a team? I think so. Opponent falls to five. And we still have a cave as an extra threat. Elisa might be a little bit late to the party. Would have been very good earlier. So our opponent's got two blockers, so especially if we animate cave and just attack with the team, we should have enough. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. On the draw with a keepable hand. Companion into wedding announcements and then Reign of Truth to pump up maybe the 1 1 token so it can attack and draw. Up against a red green, make that Naya, so probably a runes deck. As we see a rune of might played on the land. Not a great matchup for us if our opponent can string together. Showdown of the Skulls. Now, Weaver of Harmony is interesting. I think we play that first and then can double the companion triggers as well as maybe Circle of Confinement to remove multiple threats at once. One advantage we have over the Naya deck is that we do have more interaction. They typically don't have a ton of room for cards like Circle of Confinement. So, for now... Not opposed to playing a wedding announcement. And get our card draw engine going. And then if they play another creature, we can maybe take both out with a circle. If not, maybe double companion or get a second announcement down. And a restoration. Fair enough. Take three. And more removals, a welcome sight. So now I'm kind of liking play another announcement and then just attack to draw two cards end of turn. And even though Bosage is great in the matchup, I'm still gonna play it as a land. Visitor's nice, times two. So just waiting for the opponent to present another creature for us to exile. And there's a backup Runeforged champion. Now we do potentially have to watch out for Taimyo's safekeeping, which could protect her creature as well. Small chance we end up using the channel ability on Touch the Spirit Realm just to flicker an opposing creature if we need some instant speed interaction. But for now our opponent's just going all in on these champions, which will both get exiled next turn. So, can play one generous visitor, then play Circle of Confinements and copy the trigger with Weaver, counter on token. Mm, 
And we'll get a pair of tokens end of turn. They do now have the Architect to potentially generate more creatures, especially if they can give it haste. Ooh, Buseju, if they had the one-off answer here, yeah, that's a lot of value, getting both Runeforge champions back. But we do get a basic in return, at least. And we'll make it a Plains. So yeah, that could have gone better for us. But we still have another answer in hand. It's just that they're gonna get a few runes to potentially uh, draw more cards. So before Boseju happened, we were in great shape. Now the game's close to even again. Haste the Architect. I'm not opposed to double blocking, but they might pump it up even more. Rune of Might. So it would have to be a triple block now. And a Reign of Truth. Can make it a little bit too large for us to block profitably. And would send us down to one life. Which is not ideal, but... I think we let it happen. Okay, Naturalists, not a moment too soon. If I play Naturalist, I can touch Copy, which is probably the bare minimum we have to do here. And then I wouldn't be able to play another Visitor. Yeah, so be it. And then we get our Life Linker in place, so we can maybe pump it with Reign of Truth next turn. And then do we feel comfortable attacking? I think we should hang back for now. Even though drawing with the announcement would be nice. So we're at one. If they have a flying creature somehow, we could be dead. Some lists do play a Legion Angel, so that plus haste would get us. Another Runeforge. Gets trampled. But at least we were able to nerf the second chapter here by taking out Architect with all those runes on it. At least we've dodged a showdown of the Skulls so far. They could still have one in hand. Just gonna be a rune. And another Reign of Truth, okay. Glad we kept all our creatures back. Champion up to 9 power. So, triple block should be enough. Okay, another Touch the Spirit Realm is excellent. Could take out their remaining creatures. Also don't mind potentially doubling the Reign of Truth on Naturalist to gain a ton of life. So really have a lot of options now. Maybe we prefer doubling the card draw. Or what we can do is wait on Companion, for now double Reign of Truth, and then next turn double Companion. And we'll keep on pumping Naturalists to gain as much life as possible. So, Reign of Truth. Targets Naturalists. And we'll copy it. And that can maybe target something else, like our Visitor. Attack. And it's probably fine to send in everyone now. As we're about to gain 17. Boon falls to 4. And we'll pass. Possible that we could have triggered things a little differently to force a chum block on the Runeforge. But I feel safe enough with another Touch the Spirit Realm in hand and Double Weaver. Not in any immediate risk of dying. Alright, Runeforge is at the last one. Looks like it. There's one in Exile, one in the Graveyard, two in play. 
and a cami of transience. Okay, so we might need a bit of trample here to finish off the opponent, although we're also going wide enough where once we remove two creatures we should be okay. Opponent hits us for 10, that's fine. And they seem pretty dead on the way back here. Alright, our opponent packs it in, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is reasonable enough. Turn 2 can go for Kami, or we can try and get our announcement down as soon as possible by playing Companion to make it more likely we draw land. Now let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Swamp into Eye Twitch. Okay, so having the recursive threat of Kami is going to be great, as we're going to face a lot of removal. And now we've got our land to play announcement next turn. And Deadly Dispute sacrificing Eye Twitch. And a Skullport Merchants. All the snow lands pointing towards Blood of the Snow being in their deck as well. Just gonna double spell here. And then we are kind of overextending into a Meat Hook Massacre a little bit. Although I'm gonna attack with both so announcement draws as opposed to making an extra token. And they would have to Meat Hook Massacre for 4 to get rid of everything, and then we still get double Kami back. So gonna be Environmental Sciences instead. And another Merchant. Okay, so Announcement is going to transform end of turn, can play another one. And uh, yeah, pretty much attack with everyone. Maybe Companion can stay back. So we make sure we get our camis back in case of a sweeper. Opponent takes it all, not even blocking our 1 1. Alright. Team getting plus 1 plus 1. Time for Blood on the Snow. Yep. And they can get back as Culport Merchants. So time to rebuild. Now there's also a cave we could activate, which is a two-turn clock in and of itself. So definitely worth considering. Might put the opponent in an awkward spot if they don't have any instant speed removal. Alternatively, can play double Kami, followed by Another 2-drop, and then we still have the cave line available later. Sure. And then, kind of liking a Weaver of Harmony, maybe. Although, we can play it for 1 mana later. So, can maybe get one Naturalist down first. Because our opponent's going to need another Sweeper here, most likely, if they want to survive. And Weaver could be nice with Companion. Because if they let us untap between Cave and Reign of Truth, we should be in good shape. Alright, Massacre. Gonna put the opponent back up to 12, but yeah, double Kami. Keeps us in the game. So the line of attacking with Cave would have played around Massacre a lot better. But now we have triple Kami, so... Do want to probably play an enchantment creature, so... At least if they wipe the board, we get our Kami's back. And then the question is which one? Now we might want to play Weaver so that if the removal is not a sweeper and just spot removal, we can make use of the ability. But nope, another Blood on the Snow. Opponent back up to 16. Yeah, maybe the cave line would have... Uh, 
worked out better here. But they're gonna run out of sweepers eventually, right? So now I'll probably go for companion over naturalists. See if we can hit a land drop. Deadly dispute to drop. And a Tybalt Cosmic Imposter on the splash. But her opponent concedes. Yeah, I guess they were out of sweepers, and even though Tybalt can exile a Kami, they're pretty far behind on board and uh, still have a lot of goodies left over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a hand that starts out kind of slowly with double farmland. But uh, yeah, otherwise probably a keep. Still have his visitor we can play on turn two. And then double naturalist for a nice discount. And then now we just get to play a naturalist if we'd like. I think that's fine. And then next turn we might be able to go visitor plus wedding announcements. Or maybe even another naturalist for a one mana announcement. Instead of trying to play Cam or Visitor first to get some more counters going. Turn to Courier's Briefcase, opponent on maybe a Kami War deck. So we want to apply pressure quickly, get out of range from a potential Meatook Massacre. I kind of would prefer to play Wedding Announcements and draw a card with it right away in case Binding takes care of it. Although if we get it down now, we would still get a chance to maybe draw since they're unlikely to sack Briefcase to play Binding. So how about we go Visitor plus another Naturalist then for now? Or maybe Visitor plus another Kami instead. And just try and max out on the plus one counters. Although there's a small risk of a Massacre for two if they have a black source. Which would be bad. Okay, no black mana. So don't have to worry about Massacre, at least. And there's gonna be a Celestis. Now they might have Author Sweepers. Besides Meatook Massacre. Opponent's looking at our Naturalist, and the Ray of Enfeeblement can take it out. So may not be able to double spell now. Which is too bad. So... I think we still announcement, so we can... Attack with both creatures and draw. And then Touch the Spirit Realm can actually get rid of the Celestas as well. So that's something we may do next turn. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, always a good one. And lands, although it comes into play tapped. So it could go Naturalists and then circle the Shaman for one mana. Or we can just go for Touch the Spirit Realm on Celestis to deny the uh, extra mana as well. But if the Shaman attacks they could still play whatever they want. So I guess we'll double spell then. And Visitor pumps Kami which has Trample. Opponent's jumping, so there may be a sweeper in our future. So we may see a Kami War here. But if that's the case, we should still be in a good spot. Especially with Cave as an extra finisher. And we may be able to just kill the opponent if they try and get rid of our Kami of Transients. Yep, there's a Kami War. Exiles, Kami of Transients. And Arena Truth should be able to end the game here. So, touch the Spirit Realm. Can get rid of the Celestis. 
and then could commune first, but Reign of Truth is lethal. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is a little bit land heavy, but we have some removal announcement to draw, so we'll give it a shot. Up against a red deck. So there is a chance they could kill my Weaver here. I think I'm still gonna play it out since we don't have much else going on. Possible it's just a Spikefield Hazard, which only deals one damage that they were holding on to. It's gonna be a Valky, which does not see any creatures in hand. But it will see a Wedding Announcement, which I'm happy to play out here. Not gonna offer the trade. And then next turn we could use Weaver to maybe double the Announcement triggers as well. Voltage Surge finishes off Weaver. So that's maybe what they were holding. Alright, let's commune, see what else we can find. And the Naturalist we can play alongside Circle. Get rid of Valky. And then now we've got our two creatures to maybe start drawing with announcements next turn. Gonna be another Voltage Surge dealing with the Naturalists. And that's it. So we get a chance to attack. But not before another Spikefield Hazard deals with our token, so... That's definitely what they had turn one. Okay, so we don't get to draw any cards, but we do get one final token. And then we've got to touch the Spirit Realm, which can also be channeled to flicker a creature. Although I don't see that happening anytime soon. Maybe as a way to protect a key creature from removal. Big score. So this may be a Arcane Bombardment deck, which we cannot exile with either Circle or Touch the Spirit Realm. So if that's the case, it's going to be a pretty rough matchup for us. Harvester we can at least exile. As we draw more removal, not what we need here. Small argument for just exiling their treasure token. Just so they cannot play Arcane Bombardment if they have it in hand. And yeah, maybe that's worth it. And then I'll play the enchantment instead of channeling, so we have more enchantments in play for cards like Reign of Truth. Opponent will sack the blood token on the way out, discarding mountain. And it's six mana, two cards left in hand, and just a voltage surge on our token. Okay, a weaver's not bad. Hit for two. And then now we can channel Touch the Spirit Realm to Flicker Weaver in case of removal. Celestus we can also exile. And a soul transfer. Yeah, let's save Weaver. Seems more relevant than answering Celestus. Visitor can add to the pressure. Okay, big top deck for the opponent here. Can they find a sweeper? Hunt for specimens, not a bad one. They get to learn for maybe a mascot exhibition. The pest token might keep them alive. Goes for pest summoning instead, just to make sure they stay alive. Another visitor is a draw. Yeah, we probably just attack with the team. And we'll see how they decide to block. Double block visitor, chump weaver. Uh, 
And our opponent's now at 8, so we don't quite have lethal unless we maybe draw another enchantment. Opponent cycling Abandoned Mire to get back Harvester. Although never mind, Harvester got exiled, so didn't actually have any creatures to get back. And yeah, can take another look at the opponent's graveyard here to see what was going on exactly. But uh, not too many creatures. Don't see our cane bombardment either, although could easily be in their deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, hands decent. Turn two. Probably gonna lead with Kami. Although now I'm liking Weaver, so we can companion double the card draw. And if we're up against a blue deck with counter spells, getting the more valuable Weaver down seems nice. So, yeah, play Companion, can pay for Jewelry Disruption, and then once it's in play we can double the card draw. Opponent's gonna counter our Companion with a Make Disappear, that works. Commune finds announcements, and we'll hit for two. Celestas to play, can be exiled by Touch the Spirit Realm. Although, might be better off with a slightly different approach. Can play Kami plus Reign of Truth, and then play announcement with more creatures in play. So we actually uh, get to draw right away. And put the opponent under a bit more pressure. If there's a sweeper, we at least get back our Kami. And it's gonna be a massacre for three. Alright, so now Reign of Truth looking less exciting. But Naturalist into announcements, nice. Natural is down. And a Sorin can still exile the token here. And then I guess we'll be one mana short of finishing off Sorin. So in that case, probably go for Kami plus Pump or Token. I guess what we could have done is channel the uh, Touch the Spirit Realm to blink their token, and then Reign of Truth will finish off Sorin. So maybe that was a play, although I also still like playing out Kami. Two cards left in hand. And Sorin gonna plus. Finding a nice card draw spell. Blood for knowledge. And a Kaito. Can loot here. No secret is safe from me. Nope, gonna make a ninja instead. <laughs> I've got all kinds and our opponent foretells behold. Okay. We can pump our trampler, is that necessary? Probably not, so let's just pump a random token. And then if commune finds an enchantment. Like a Weaver, we pump Kami, which will finish off Sorin. And the rest can go face. And hope to dodge a Sweeper. All their opponent does get to dig pretty deep with Behold. Alright, opponent goes digging, so now they can still cast Massacre for X equals 3 at the very least. Which wouldn't be the end of the world. Now it could be for 4. And our opponent passes. So is there anything else we want to do here? Don't think so. Could touch the Spirit Realm 
the Celestus, make them use it. Or we can keep double channel on Touch the Spirit Realm available. Which might be better. And we're just going face. And yeah, animating Hive is not going to be enough, and our opponent concedes. Awesome. So yeah, we got to see our green-white enchantment deck in action. And overall, it's not going to break the meta, but seems like a solid deck to climb the ladder. And it's also relatively budget-friendly, especially if you haven't kept up with the latest set, as it's mostly cards from Kamigawa and uh, before then. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.